It's Epcot Food and Wine Time. Flower edition. Hey, ma'am, fam, it's the most beautiful time of year here at Epcot, the Flower and Garden Festival. We are spending the next two days exploring everything that the festival has to offer, from the food kitchens to the topiaries. It's my favorite festival of the year, so let's get to it. We're bringing you with us. Let's go. It's Encanto. It's so beautiful. They did such a good job oh of these topiaries. The I'm detail. deceased. Look at the candles in her dress. Look at the fact that Isabella is made out of succulents. <laughs> oh my gosh. You even got little Antonio there with his bird. These are unreal. Stunning. I'm always blown away by the work that Horticulture does for Flower and Garden. The topiaries are one of my favorite things and this is one of the best ones I've ever seen. Wow. I'm excited to see more. Ugh. First thing you gotta do when you come to any Epcot festival is grab yourself a passport. This is gonna be the key to success. It's got all of the menus and the booths in there. It's got your garden graze, which is the food crawl at this festival, details for everything. So make sure you grab one of these. The Epcot Flower and Garden Festival kicked off on March 1st and it runs all the way through July 5th. It's a nice long festival, plenty of time to come enjoy. And in my opinion, it is the most beautiful time of year to come to Epcot. The gardens look amazing. They've got thousands of flowers planted everywhere. One of my favorite things are the beautiful topiaries of Disney characters. Excited to go find a bunch of those today. And then of course, you've got the incredible outdoor kitchens. The outdoor kitchens are of course the best part of any Epcot Festival. These are your little food kiosks and what I love about Flower and Garden is they use a lot of bright and fresh and colorful and produce and like the, the food at this festival is amazing. I think it's better food than any other festival and I'm excited to see what they have this year. We just picked up our adorable gift cards from Gateway Gifts, which I do recommend doing folks instead of maybe going to the Creation Shop because Creations is going to be pretty busy and Gateway Gifts a little bit more tame and easy to pick up those gift cards if that's all you're after. They also, though, do have the scavenger hunt. It's the spike the bee pollination scavenger hunt. So every festival has these cute little games. They're about $10 before tax or discounts. Um, and they are going to have you search around World Showcase and around the festival for the little spike the bee. Once you find all of them and match the stickers, you can turn it back into any of the Disney-owned gift shops for a prize. And they're really cute this year that you pick from either these little cups or these little plates. And I always recommend these, especially if you've got little ones, because it's a fun way to keep them engaged while mom and dad, you can drink around and eat around the festival. Let's talk about our budget. We pulled you again, and you told us that you, your budget per person was between $75 and $100. So we are each going to allocate ourselves $100 per person, so $200 in total, for our feast around the festival. Before we get to the kitchens, though, we're checking out some of the topiaries here in World Nature. I love this one. It's Woody and Bo Peep and her sheep. There's only one thing I don't love about it, and it's Bo Peep's eyes. I feel like she's staring at me and deep into my soul. Oh, no. There are also several garden displays around the festival. And my favorite one, probably the most popular one, is the butterfly garden here next to the land pavilion. You can actually go in and see dozens of beautiful butterflies flying around and learn more about butterflies and what kind of plants you can plant in your yard to uh, encourage butterflies. And then around World Showcase, as well as around the rest of the festival, there are gardens like spice gardens in different countries. There's a prehistoric garden over in World Discovery. So just luxuriating and walking around this festival is why I love it so much. It's beautiful and you can just enjoy nature. If I stand still long enough, do you think they'll think I'm a flower? Sure. Oh, that's hard. Enjoyed the butterfly garden and found our next topiary. I think this is the cutest figment they've ever done. Look, he's made out of succulents throughout. I think that's why he's so cute. I, uh, I just can't understand that talent. The magic of the Disney horticulture team is unbelievable. Also, I've been distracted now because I see Winnie the Pooh and he has a butterfly net. Oh my gosh, are you going to catch some butterflies? Yeah? Yet another adorable topiary. This was one of my favorites every year because I love Lion King. It's just, you, they just can't miss. I mean, nice. the detail is unreal. Like, the, look at Mufasa's mane. And just, 
Mm, I love them so much. I learned on a tour once that some of these take upwards of five years to make them. That's wild. Think yeah. about how much planning has to go into these yeah. topiaries. Yeah. And that all of them have a backup in case something happens. But some of the plants they use for these, yeah, take five years to grow. Am I getting hungry? Yes. But there's always time to stop by Mickey and Minnie's topiary. And they're joined by Chiptail and Pluto. Oh my god. They're massive too. That Mickey is bigger than either of us. Like these are so unbelievable. And he's holding a little bouquet of flowers. I can't. Molly insisted we go to see one more topiary. <laughs> It's the best one, it's Buzz Lightyear. Mm -hmm. And now that we've done that, we are bound and determined to eat. There will be no more distraction. <sighs> what? Well, first of all, the Joffrey's carts usually have a festival drink. I didn't see one advertised here, but the other Joffrey carts usually do, so it's technically a kitchen for the festival. Second of all, I learned about composting. Did you know that last year alone, Joffrey's composted over 372,000 pounds of coffee grounds from Walt Disney World? So we're learning. And third of all, probably most importantly, the first booth we're going to is the brunch booth. And you expect me to have brunch without iced coffee? Am I an animal? No. The first stop of the day, the perfect way to kick off a day, if you ask me, is brunch. So we went to the booth that this year they have named Brunch Cot and ordered a few items. We actually ordered three things, but they only had two ready. The third thing had some eggs and they were not ready with the eggs, so they said we could come back and get those in a minute, but get going on this stuff. Molly's be courteous in the park PSA. Be very kind to these cast members, especially the first few days of the festival. They're figuring out operationally how to cook all this food. A lot of it's being cooked to order. So just have a little patience. If you want delicious food, it takes time. So just have patience when you go to the booth. Anyway. Be nice to cast members. That's the most important thing. Back to brunch. Our first two items from Brunch Cot are fan faves that have returned, including the avocado toast. It's got avocado, marinated uh, toy box tomatoes. It's on toasted ciabatta bread. And this is a plant-based dish and the first dish on the garden grays that we'll be consuming through the festival. Also picked up the fried cinnamon roll bites. These have got cream cheese frosting and candied bacon on them. And y'all, they are one of my favorites every year. I'm so glad they brought these back. And they were waiting on dish number three, but let's start here. Starting with the avocado toast. This is the first item on the Garden Grays, which is the food crawl during Flower and Garden. They do one of these food crawls at every festival with a different theme. At Garden Grays, it is all plant-based food. So the different items that you can purchase are all vegan. Now, the way that these crawls work is that you have to purchase any combination of five of the included items. It can be five of the same item. It can be five different ones. It can be on one day, multiple days. Each time you do, make sure you get a stamp in your festival passport. Then once you've gotten all five, you can turn them in for a bonus prize. In years past, the bonus prize for this festival has been a special Dole Whip. So we're gonna be working our way around to complete that today. But for now, avocado toast. I'm about as basic as they come, so I love avocado toast. This one's pretty simple. I think the marinated tomatoes are the best part of the dish because it adds a little bit of brightness, a little burst of flavor. Otherwise, you got this toasted ciabatta, which I wish was buttered. I know it can't be like buttered, but it could be like fake buttered because um, the bread needs a little bit more flavor. Love the avocado, though. It's not fully mashed up. It's still got a little bit of chunks, which is my preferred texture. This is a really basic dish. If you're a plant-based eater, I think this is a winner. If you're not a plant-based eater, but you like brunch, it's a winner. Um, it's just a little bit basic for the price. However, it's my favorite thing on the Garden Grays. I'm gonna call it early, even though it's literally the first dish I'm eating this video. I might eat my words when I get to the corn on the cob, but I like this every year. And I will be savoring the fried cinnamon roll bites. Oh, that's frosting on the inside. All right, we gotta assume the position. Well, those are epic. It is a sweet treat. I'm normally not a sweet eater, but the fact that you have the crunchy exterior, the light dusting of cinnamon and sugar, and the icing on the interior, the cream cheese icing, isn't overly sweetened. It actually helps balance out the dish. And the bacon on top, stellar. Way to make it a rounded out dish. Would I prefer a little bit more bacon? Obviously, yeah, we love bacon. But uh, this is a must get. This is making my best of the fest. I'm gonna go ahead and call that all right now. See you later. Our other dish from Brunch Cot is prepared. It is the Lox Benedict on an everything focaccia with an everything spiced cream cheese, shallots, crispy capers, and hollandaise. 
Now that is a good looking egg. Now, let's try to get a little bit of everything. Oh, look at that egg, that is beautiful. It's a big bite. <laughs> Cheers. Let's talk about all of the individual elements here. One, you must be a fan of lox if you are going to get this dish. I happen to like them. I know that that might not be a popular thing, but I really do enjoy lox. The twist is the everything focaccia, which is incredibly good, very dense, as well as the everything sort of spread over top. It's a way to sort of break up the flavors and textures that you're going to get from the standard sort of poached egg, hollandaise sauce, and lox, which is all can be one texture. The focaccia and sauce is there to break it up. And shout out to the crispy capers. As with anything when you do with lox, bagels and lox, a caper on top, chef's kiss. This is a lot of food though, so keep that in mind. It's a lot of food. Up next on our excursion is Farmer's Feast. Now this booth is unique because it actually changes its menu three times throughout the festival. And this is because it tries to stay up to date with whatever is fresh and in season. So it gives this booth a lot of revisitability. Might not be a reward, but we're gonna make it one. Revisitability. From the Farmer's Feast early bloom menu, we picked up the char-grilled bison ribeye with creamy leek fondue, red wine butter sauce, and whipped red wine goat cheese. All of those things sound delicious, but you know what's even more beautiful is this hibiscus lemonade cocktail that is lemonade with hibiscus gin. And look at that accoutrement on top. Ooh, hoo, hoo, you fancy. Oh yeah. Look at this. This is beautiful. I'm gonna get some of that goat cheese, the red wine sauce. Oh, that's the best. Whoa, that is bonkers good. I don't even know where to begin. Okay, let's start with the meat. The meat is cooked perfectly. It's salted a little bit, which is really nice because it helps balance out the rich leek and the red wine butter sauce. But the meat, as perfect as it is with this char grill crust on the top, they've actually got the grill going. You can see them cooking it. Even better than the meat is this leek fondue. It is cheesy. It is savory. It's an interesting texture. When I think fondue, I think creamy, but it definitely has like the chunks of the leek in there. So if that's going to throw you, just keep that in mind. That is fantastic, really cheesy and delicious. But then this red wine butter sauce, I would like to put this on literally everything. It is so rich and perfect. And then you've got it balanced with this nice light whipped goat cheese. This is a perfect dish. No notes, five stars, best of the fest. Because Molly is not a gin drinker, I will take one for the team and try this cocktail. Here goes nothing. We warmed it in a way. I think it's a lemon. Is it? I think it's lemonade. Oh, it is. Oh, it's very sweet. The lemon, not the cocktail. After mixing it, I have a very different impression than when I first drank it. It seems as if there's a little bit of a gin floater on top, which, I mean, if you like gin that much, it's very spicy. Juniper forward and tastes like pine. Uh, but it mixes so well with this floral lemonade. They picked a very floral gin, not necessarily a spicy gin. Yeah, and there's approval. So I just think that this is a very good, refreshing cocktail. If you want to take this and sip it around a hot day on the, in the World Showcase, this is where you should do it. Next up, we said hello to Plant Donald. Not the best Plant Donald there's ever been, but Plant Donald is here once again and have stopped at Jardín de Fiestas, which is the booth here in Mexico grabbed a couple of items. Now, I love the food and drink that's available in the Mexico Pavilion year round, so I hope this doesn't disappoint. Uh, this is the new Quesadilla de Flor de Calabaza, which is house-made masa tortillas, and it's filled with squash blossoms, bacon, onion, zucchini, and cheese. Then we've also got a new margarita. This is the Cristal Margarita. It's got 100% agave tequila blanco, mezcal, clarified lemon juice, and orange liqueur, and it comes in a cute little souvenir cup. First of all, we love a cute cup. Look at that. Second of all, I love Mezcal, so I hope this does not disappoint. And it was $16, which is a lot, especially on a budget, but it's tequila, so. Ooh, that is so good. I wish this was on their permanent menu. This is my dream margarita right here. It is simple. It's got the Mezcal, which is the smoky sister of tequila, and you can really taste that smokiness. It's not too sweet because it's lemon, uh, and then the orange liqueur is adding a little bit of sweetness to it, so it's not too over the top, um, but because it's liqueur, it's also adding that kind of boozy fun to it. Taste the tequila as well. A plus, I hope they add this to their permanent menu. Unlike Festival of the Arts, I am not mad 
that we got the margarita here. It's expensive, yes, but that's really good. That might go on my best of the fest. We opted in for the new item this year. The taco that is on the menu for Flower and Garden is historically very, very tasty. Uh, but let's try something new, shall we? Uh, don't, you don't have to just bite it. Ooh, cheese pull, okay. cheese pull. I take back what I said. All right. Hmm. First things first, this is very good. You can tell it is fresh ingredients. The cheese, amazing with the cheese pull. Squash blossoms on the interior. The masa tortilla is amazing. I will say this, as good as it is, it is one note the entire way through. I'm missing a sauce or some kind of spice to come and break that note up. Now don't get me wrong, that note's really good. It's like you're singing a high C, very, very good. But I'd appreciate some modulation. We do have a side of a tomatillo salsa, and that's good, but I'd like a crema or maybe more of the tomatillo salsa or the salsa actually on the dish to begin with. Uh, but overall, really solid. Well done, Mexico. Next on our journey is Lotus House. After we saw Ana and Elsa topiaries and a family of pandas, we decided to pick up some crab rangoon style dumplings. And you know what time it is. It's trash can table time. Trash can table time. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Lotus House has similar dishes to last year, including the spicy chicken uh, skewer with the peanut butter sauce, which is great. But again, budget and two, these are one of my favorite dishes every festival. I look forward to them every festival. They are crab rangoons that you can get from pretty much any American Chinese restaurant, but they make them fresh in house. They've got real crab in there. And I did one of my favorite little secret menu hacks, which is ask nicely if they could give me a little bit of that peanut sauce that comes with the chicken. Little baby mini PSA. The cast members are more than happy to accommodate you if you've got allergies or don't want a certain ingredient on the food or you want a little bit of extra something. Um, a lot of this food is made to order right there so they can make sure that it's exactly what you want. But just keep in mind the queue times and just be courteous as always. But uh, this is one of my favorite little hacks and I can't wait. I love Crab Rangoon so much. True story, one time Max, Allen, and I were going to an escape room, but we had a few minutes to kill before it started and there was a Chinese restaurant in the shopping center and I made them go to the Chinese restaurant just so I could order Crab Rangoon's as a pre-escape room snack. Ooh! Mm. 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 I wanted to call them my children, but I realized that'd be weird because I'm eating them. Um, these are so good. They are perfectly crispy. There's tons of that cream cheese crab filling. They're great on their own. They've got, they've got a sauce on there already. It's kind of like a sweet and sour situation, but when you dip it in the spicy peanut sauce, it adds a little bit something more. It is so amazing. Yes, they're a more expensive item. Yes, you can get Crab Rangoon at Panda Express, but I assure you, they are not as good as these. Best of the fest every year. This year's no different. After taking a moment to visit Snow White and her seven dwarves, we made our way over to, and I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this name, Baunmarkt, which is the farmer's market in Germany, and we picked up the potato pancakes with house-made applesauce. Now there is another version of this that has ham and sour cream, but we picked up this because it is part of the garden graze, and we're still looking to fill that out. Hmm. You know, it has been a minute since I've had applesauce, and what better way than with a Potato cake? Here we go. Um, let's try that individually. Applesauce. Good. Potato cake. Good. Putting those together is a decision. Now, I also didn't grow up on this, nor do I know if it is truly a classical pairing, uh, but I will tell you that um, no, I've had it. It's a requirement for me at every festival to point out the train here in Germany, because if you look at the townsfolk here, they are also celebrating the Flower and Garden Festival. And I'm just really excited for them. And I hope that they are ordering the ribeye from Farmer's Feast and not the potato pancake. Now, we will be skipping Italy. This is our first bypassed booth of the festival, the Primavera Kitchen, and I'm sorry. But Italy, 
disappoints me every festival. I'm not ready to be let down again. I am not ready to be hurt again. We're on a budget. We got our eyes on the prize and some other countries and I'm just, I've been hurt too many times, Italy. What I will say I wanna make a quick stop to look at is the Lady in the Tramp Topiary here in the Piazza. It's one of the most beautiful ones every year. Plus they fill this whole thing with flowers. So we're gonna make a stop here before it's on to the American Adventure. It wouldn't be an Epcot festival without a concert series. And at Flower and Garden, it is Garden Rocks, featuring bands like Journey, Daughtry, Smash Mouth, which uh, <laughs> I'd like to see in the Blue Oyster Cult coming this year. And that's on select dates throughout the festival. And, and by Journey, you do mean one of the former lead vocalists. Yes. <laughs> the it, entire it, band of Journey yeah, is yeah. not here for free at Epcot. No, no, no. It's one of the former lead vocalists of Journey. There is also a dining package that you can reserve ahead of time for restaurants like the Beer Garden that will give you access to Garden Rocks, or you could use the walk-up quick service options at Regal Eagle or Spice Road Table, like we did for Festival of the Holidays. So if you wanna see more details on that, check out that video. Anybody can attend the concert. It is included with your park admission, but if you do want reserved seating, I recommend going for one of those two options. Before I show you what we've purchased here at Magnolia Terrace in the American Adventure, can we take a moment to recognize how incredible the new Tiana Topiary is? Stunning. It's beautiful. Stunning. I thought Encanto was good, but this Princess Tiana one may be the best one in the festival. Beautiful. It's amazing. Okay, back to food. It makes sense Princess Tiana's Topiary would be here because the menu here at Magnolia Terrace is definitely Mardi Gras Louisiana inspired. We went for the Mufaletta Panini, which I'm sure someone from New Orleans is screaming at my pronunciation. Uh, but it's got ham, salami, mortadella, provolone, Swiss, and an olive salad. That is a traditional New Orleans sandwich. Uh, and then we also went for the Bananas Foster Bread Pudding. It's kind of spicy. That is lovely. That's got a lot of good filling in there. I love how much cheese is in here first and foremost. The bread is crunchy on the outside, which is the perfect way to enjoy a sandwich, nice toasted bread. But I think the winner here is that olive spread. So you've got a couple different olives in here, different spices. There's definitely a pepper involved because I've got a little zip on the tongue, so I can't quite tell what kind of pepper it is. So if you're completely spice adverse, I'd maybe skip this one. I think this is a pretty good sandwich. I don't know that it's the best thing I've eaten at the festival, um, but it's pretty solid. And I'm gonna try the Bananas Foster Bread Pudding. Uh, all of those words are words that I enjoy, so let's dive in. I'm a fan. No, this is a big bite, and I'm shameless, so here we go. Oh my god. The caramel sauce is incredible. It carries some of the flavors that you'd expect from like a brandy that's used to likely deglaze. Um, beautiful caramelization. What kills me is the moisture packed into this bread pudding. It is not dry and that is normally the pitfall of a lot of bread puddings, but somehow it still has a crispy exterior that hasn't been soggied by the caramel sauce. You're going to have to like the flavor of bananas, okay? So if you don't, maybe not for you, but this is on my best of the fest, no question. Now folks, we are going to pass the funnel cake stand simply because, and I know this is, um, an unpopular opinion, but I dislike funnel cake. But they do have a specialty funnel cake for all of the festivals, and for Flower and Garden, it is a banana split funnel cake. From Hanami in Japan, we picked up the fruit sushi or furushi, and from La Isla Fresca, we picked up the coconut tres leche cake. <sighs> and we're excited for double dessert times. Remix. Got it. A true wizard in the making of the chopsticks, he pulls the chopsticks apart with his canine teeth. Are you Gandalf? I'm Battenfur. Just like you, we're equally good at this accent. Uh huh. The frushi is strawberry, pineapple, and lychee wrapped in sweet rice and a pink soy wrap, served with whipped cream and a drizzled raspberry sauce with a sprinkling of toasted coconut on the top. I'm not sure of proper dipping protocol, so I'm just going to go with whipped cream and a smidge of the raspberry sauce. This garden is awesome. I'm very distracted by it. It goes like quite long in this pavilion, but it's different water features with bamboo. I'm very into it. Sorry, back to the fruit sheet. 
Yeah, the fruit sheep. It is fresh, which is nice. Lightly sweet, not super sweet because it is just natural fruits and it's very slightly sweetened rice wrapped around it. Almost no flavor from the wrapping, but that's okay. That's what you want. Dipping it in whipped cream and the raspberry sauce really does complete it. I think this is fantastic. You can taste every fruit individually, but together they sing. And from La Isla Fresca, which is between France and Morocco, we have the coconut tres leches cake. It's a vanilla cake soaked in oat milk, almond milk, and coconut milk, and topped with toasted coconut. You may have noticed from the description that there's not any dairy milk because this is another plant-based item on the Garden Grays. I loved this last year, so I'm excited to dig into it again. I'm a big coconut fan. Look at that, that looks delish. Mm. Oh, really good. The first bite I got was like all cream. So texture wise, it was almost like a pudding. But now that I've gotten into it, I've gotten to this beautiful cake, which is really moist and flavorful. You obviously have to like coconut to enjoy this. In fact, I wish there was more of that toasted coconut on top because I love coconut. But I think this is a really, <laughs> I love this little water effect right here. I think this is a really good dessert, plant-based or not. I don't think if you didn't know it was plant-based, you would know because of how delicious and rich it is. So this is a great dessert. If you're a coconut lover, recommend checking this one out. I also really like the sugared shrimp from La Isla Fresca, um, but I had it last year and we're conserving some dollars for the rest of the booze. But if you're a shrimp fan, give that one a whirl as well. Bonjour from France. You may have realized that we did skip Morocco. They've got the kebabs again this year, as well as a new hummus dish. But considering a lot of Moroccan cuisine has pine nuts and Alan is deathly allergic to those, we decided to bypass. We did not bypass, however, stopping to look at how adorable the Kermit and Miss Piggy topiary is, which is right by the bathrooms in Morocco. Additionally, in France, they have some of the cutest topiaries from Beauty and the Beast, including Cogsworth with a working clock. Well, I guess it's not a working clock, but it is moving and Lumiere who looks amazing at night. From France, we picked up one of my favorites from last year. I could not help but get this one again. It's the croissant au fromage de chèvre, herb et à roti. I'm so sorry to anyone that speaks French. Clearly, I need to take more classes with Muzzy. That was terrible, but I tried and that's what's important. This is a freshly baked croissant with goat cheese, herbs, and roasted garlic. It is screaming my name. I'm so excited about this. I hope it's as good as I remember. <laughs> this might be my ultimate best of the fest. I know, it's bold, but have you met me? This is everything I love. It's a freshly baked, warm, buttery croissant. It is so flaky and perfect. Then it is stuffed with herbed goat cheese. It kind of reminds me of Borson cheese that they use in a lot of places for like mashed potatoes, but way better because it's French really nice goat cheese. It is creamy, it is dreamy, it is delicious, it's super garlicky. This is incredible. And as someone who primarily eats carbs and dairy, this is everything I've ever dreamt of in food. Thank you, France, for this gift. Merci, you're the best. I'm happy right now. Uh, you look different. So do you. Huh. Anyway. Won't you join me in a stroll through the queue in a place that I like to call the booth where I currently am. From Northern Bloom, we have acquired the beef tenderloin tips with mushroom bordelais sauce and whipped potatoes with garden veggies. I'm looking forward to this. Canada normally does a really good job with their beef dishes. I'm trying to get everything in one bite, which is proven to be rather diff The carrot. The carrot is the problem. Carrots are the problem. All right, that is a loaded bite. <laughs> okay. The mashed potatoes are good. Uh, if you're not a fan of cooked carrots, you're not gonna like these, but I actually think they're cooked pretty well. Bordelais sauce has the slight earthiness of the mushrooms, but just enough, enough acidity from the sauce to make you wanna keep coming back for more and it balances it out. I gotta be honest though, uh, the beef tenderloin is kinda chewy. So I don't know if it was cooked for too long. That's sort of my initial guess. For all the accoutrement, a little disappointing. I have to agree with Alan's analysis of the beef, it, which is a bummer because that mushroom sauce and the mashed potatoes are banging. So it's a bummer the beef is not great. Maybe it was just a bad day for it. But I also want to say, we picked a bad spot. There's so many birds right here. Um, I want to say that the Bambi topiary is so cute. I want to cry a little bit. It's Bambi and Thumper and Flower and they're so 
cute. I think, I think we're gonna have to do, when we also get to the end with Best of Fest, I think we're gonna have to do the Best Topiary Award. Absolutely. And Bambi may be a, may be a dark horse. Cute little butt. What am I looking at? What you're looking at is shrimp scampi poutine from the refreshment port. It's french fries topped with shrimp, lemon, garlic, cheese fondue, artichokes, and spinach. And it looks like some chives on top there. It smells amazing. And I don't know if it'll be good, but we're here to try new things. They also have peanut butter and jelly soft serve there. But I decided to go against that. One, because it's grape jelly, which is not my favorite. And two, the best peanut butter flavored ice cream comes from Florian Fortescue's in Wizarding World. And three, probably most importantly, we're on a budget and I didn't know if we had enough cash for that too. There's things I want to try beyond that. But I'm trying to find a scrimp. I think I got one right here. Hold on. Oh yeah. I may have made a mistake. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. I think it's just too many things going on, which was my initial concern upon reading the menu. Each of the components are good, but together it's too many textures. You've got the fries, which unfortunately are buckling under the weight of everything else, so they've become kind of soggy. Normally when you get poutine there, they do a good job with the crispness of the fries so that they hold up, but they're not holding up here. Then you've got the kind of waxy, cold cheese curds. Then you've also got the shrimp, which are like the chewy shrimp texture, and they're a little salty for my particular palate. And then you've got the sauce, which is not a smooth, creamy sauce because of the spinach and the artichoke. It's kind of almost like a chunky Alfredo style sauce is how I would describe it. So it's just too many things going on. I admire them for taking a risk and taking a chance. And Celine Dion encourages taking chances. And I like to think that it's right next to Canada. They were listening to Queen Celine, um, but it's just too much going on for me personally. So that one's that one's a miss for me. I think the kicker is that the scampi sauce separated. Like if you look at it, I think the acidity of the artichoke, sort of whatever it's in, might have separated the sauce a bit. So yeah, it's a lot happening. If you're a texturally sensitive person, be aware. And from Trowel and Trellis, hosted by Impossible. We have the Impossible Lumpia with a sweet Thai chili sauce. I thought that there might be one or two. This would be described as a handful. It should be noticed that Trowel and Trellis is a vegan booth, so it is not surprising that the Impossible Lumpia gave us one of these stamps for our garden grays. Why don't you get in there and grab one? Oh, it's sticky. I wasn't sure what Lumpia was going to be because the menu just says Lumpia with Thai sweet chili sauce. So it's clearly just the impossible meat wrapped in some kind of wrapper and fried. Like a wonton style wrapper. Yeah. Cheers. You know, when we cheers, and I didn't make a crispy sound. It's not crunchy at all. Like only the tips. Here's what I will say. The impossible meat doesn't taste bad. It just doesn't taste like meat. And the sweet Thai sauce is, I actually don't hate it. I think the worst part's the texture. I don't love impossible meat, so I was prepared to not like that portion of it, but I agree, I don't think that's the problem. What I'm not loving is that it's not crispy. You want the whole thing to be crispy like an egg roll, and it's only crispy on the very, very ends. The whole middle section is soggy, and then mixed with the fake meat, it's just like not a very appealing texture. Mm. Flavor-wise, it's not bad. I, I think it's kind of boring, if I'm being honest, flavor-wise. So I would not get this again. And I think there's probably better plant-based food for your plant-based eaters. I've had the short rib that they've had here before. That's been around for a while. That's actually quite flavorful and delicious, and I'm regretting not picking that at this booth now. Here we are. Pro festival tip. If the lines are very long, yeah. divide and conquer. Figure out what you want to eat at two booths that are next to each other. One person goes to one, one person goes to the other, find a table in the middle, and then have a feast. A feast. It particularly works if you want food from one booth and drinks from another, which is exactly what we just did. That sounds a lot like what's on our table. And both of us got the things we said we were going to order. Neither of us got three extra beers. Hmm. 
And here we have the influencer walking with a bit of trepidation as she's carrying four individual beverages, all of them beer. The observer, happy to see them, wishes that she does not drop them. I, I did it. I, I did a thing. Amazing. I was only supposed to get two drinks and I got five. Wait, what? And here is our entire spread. It looks delightful. I'm gonna kick it off with the Honey Bistro. Yes, it is said correctly because there is an emphasis on bees and the making of honey at the Honey Bistro. And every single one of the foods and beverages has honey in it. First up is the pollinator flatbread with honey whipped marscapone, honey caramelized onions, blueberry gastrique, prosciutto, honey whipped goat cheese, arugula, honey vinaigrette, and bee pollen. That is so much on that flatbread. It sounds so good though. This it, is a different version of last year. They've done the flatbread for a few years, but this one looks lovely. And we also have the chicken and waffle. This is crispy honey brine chicken and a honey sweet corn bread waffle with whipped honey butter and spicy honey. So much honey. I'm so excited about this. Please don't let me down. This is one of the top things I was excited about at this festival. I literally couldn't agree more. Shifting over to the beverage portion of this feast, I went over to Pineapple Promenade, which is where you can get your Dole Whip. You can get a spicy hot dog. I was obviously not getting that. And then you can get a variety of fruit flavored beverages. I always have to get, it's one of my favorite things at the festivals every year, the Frozen Desert Violet Lemonade. This is a non-alcoholic freeze. It's got an edible flower on there. That flower came from the land, uh, living with the land, the greenhouse, which is awesome. It is a must have every festival. And I initially was just gonna get that and this beer, which is the Violet Lemonade Ale from Pialenda Brewing Company. And I was gonna do like a little taste test. What's better, the beer version or the slush version of Violet Lemonade? But then I could not resist this beer flight. Each of the beers sounded so good, so we picked up that as well. You're looking at a beer flight made up of the Three Daughters Brewing Tropical Hefeweizen. That's in, made from St. Pete. That's a, one of my favorite craft breweries. You've got the Brew Dog out of Ohio, their Hazy Jane IPA. And then coming from Cincinnati, Ohio, the Urban Artifact Teak Tropical American Fruit Tart. So we're looking at three different fruity beers, three different varietals, and I just couldn't say no. We'll figure it out in the budget later, but I think this was a good choice. Time for chicken and waffle. Gonna cut up on the chicken and eat it with the waffle. Gonna be so good. Yes. Gonna be so good. It looks good. It looks like good chicken and waffles. Get that, mm -hmm. get that corn waffle. Uh, wow. You do not escape my fork corn waffle. Not today. Okay, well, it is. Okay, well, maybe. Here's what we do. Here's what we do. Here. We just we do it. Yep, we do a double fork situation. I mean, fork it, right? We're going to use two forks. <laughs> Here we go. Two, two forks, one man. I love how the <laughs> the most shaky part is my non-dominant hand. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's probably going on my best of the fest. Uh, very crispy chicken, breaded well. It's not too thick in terms of breading, but it still holds up to the spicy honey butter. Yeah, that's one of my best of the fest. It's breaded perfectly, not too thick, but it still holds up to the honey butter, the spicy honey butter. Uh, I personally wish it had more spice, but I think if you're spice averse, you'll feel the kick a little bit. The star of the show, crazily enough, is the waffle. The honey corn waffle, amazing. Crumbly, yes, but worth every crumb. And the butter doesn't fall off. And they're actually using dark meat put cuts of chicken. Next up is the flatbread, which literally has full blueberries on it. I was always a fan of the previous version of this dish with chicken. So I'm excited to try an upgraded one and see what it tastes like. The Honey Bistro is where it's at. Yum. I wasn't sure about the full blueberries on there but they're fantastic. They're like a little burst of sweetness amongst all the savory. You've got that richness and saltiness from the prosciutto. You've got those caramelized onions. The cheese is amazing. I wish there was more of the honey whipped goat cheese. That would be my one dish, but this is a really good balance between sweet and savory. Excellent. Would we'll definitely get this again. Honey Bistro might be the best booth here. And now I bring to you the first ever Mammoth Club Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival Violet Lemonade Throwdown, sponsored by 
Pineapple Promenade. Except for not really. This content is not sponsored. First up, the classic frozen violet lemonade. Oh, it's so good. It is so good. I'm obsessed with it. It is way sweeter than anything I normally like to drink, but it is so refreshing. It's got a little bit of tartness from the lemon. It's got a little bit of floralness from the, the edible flowers kind of like perfuming in there. It is so good. A must every flower in the garden. Plus it's beautiful. I'd be great with vodka, but that's not what we're about today. Our alcoholic version again is a violet lemonade ale. Oh, oh wow. I don't know if I can declare a winner. Cause so I think the question is, do you want to drink alcohol or not? I think Alan would give it to the lemonade ale by looking at his face from behind the camera. It was a fantastic beer. It's a little bit floral, a little bit fruity, but you can definitely taste that as beer, so it's not as sweet as this one. But either way, one of these is a must-do. Both are probably on my best of the fest, and I declare it a tie because I can do that. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, that's lovely. The best way I can describe a good Hefeweizen is that it has a slightly gumball taste to it. Mm. Like, it's almost like... Most people describe it as banana, but I go straight to like a bazooka zooka bubble gum situation, and that one has pineapple on top of it, and that's very refreshing. That's and nice. lovely. That is lovely. I originally sipped on the hazy IPA, and now hazy IPAs are a little less hoppy, a little more fruity typically than a regular IPA. Um, they are fermented a second time, which is what gives it that flavor. And then ones like these are infused with some kind of fruit. I assume it's pineapple because it's called the pineapple beer float. Yeah. Uh, pineapple beer flight but it kind of tasted more like a citrus to me like maybe orange either way very good i don't think as unique as some of the other beers at this booth but still a good hazy ipa if you're into that and i'm trying the tart and it lives up to its name please sir fun so enjoy it's very very good Ooh. that if you nice. like slightly sour beverages and those of you like i don't know if i'd ever enjoy that Tarts, that's really what tarts are. They are, they have that sour twang to them. It's not like a warhead for the 90 kid, 90s kids out there. Not a warhead. But it is just enough to get the salivary glands going. I like that a lot. It's actually really refreshing. Overall, I really like this flight because you got three very different styles of beer, but all of them are light and fruity and refreshing, and I think perfect for this festival. Hazy IPA takes it, though. Oh. And now we have Florida Fresh. We got the grilled street corn on the cob with savory garlic spread and spicy corn chips sprinkled across the exterior. The watermelon salad with blueberries, pickled red onions, balsamic, and feta. And the Florida strawberry shortcake. Really a feast from Florida Fresh. Say that five times fast. Feast from Florida Fresh. Feast from Florida Fresh. Feast from Florida Fresh. Feast from Florida Fresh. Flesh. flesh? Yeah. We have a feast of flesh. Well, we are in Florida. It could happen. Um, and <laughs> note the corn is on the garden grapes. These watermelon chunks are massive. Got to get everything in one bite. A little bit of everything. I'm going to be honest. This isn't a dish for everybody, but it is a dish for me. The watermelon is sweet ever so just like lightly sweet. The arugula is earthy, the balsamic vinaigrette is an, adds an acidity, and that complements with the feta, which is just a little bit creamy. You're covering a lot of different flavor and textural bases here, and I think it's a beautiful combination. Ooh. Digging into the grilled street corn. Now, what I love about this is that they are literally grilling it right now, and the chef hands it to you and dresses it to order. There's two different versions of this. Both are plant-based. The other one has plant-based cotija cheese on it, but we went for the one with the spicy corn chips. That was real good. That is excellent. That might make Molly's best of the best. That is so simple and so delicious. I think the addition of the spicy corn chips is amazing. They've had this grilled corn on the cob for years with this amazing garlicky, buttery spread, but it's not butter because it's plant-based. I don't think I want to know what it is. Probably whatever they make movie theater butter out of it with. Um, but the corn chips add a little bit of crunch and they actually have some heat. There's definitely a tingle in the back of my throat. So if you don't like spice, I'd go for the other version, but this is awesome. Best of the fest for sure. Yeah. If eating corn on the cob in Epcot isn't the dream, I don't know what is. 
trying to get bite-sized pieces of this strawberry shortcake. You're doing a stellar job. Thank you. I'm going to get a little bit of berry, a little cream, a little biscuit. Berries and cream, berries and cream. Cheers. Mm -hmm. That's going on my best of the fest for desserts. Yeah, that's freshly whipped cream, by the way. I want to just eat this and not talk about it, but I suppose I should talk about it. What I love about this dish is its simplicity. It is fresh whipped cream, it's fresh strawberries, and then it's like a biscuit that's been lightly sugared. So it's not super duper sweet. It's not over the top sickly sweet. It doesn't taste artificial at all. In fact, the biscuit is almost savory. It's almost just kind of a generic biscuit. So it helps cut any of the sweetness from the berries and the whipped cream. But wow, this is d delightful. If I have one critique of this very, very good dish, is that I would like it to be only one half of the biscuit. Mm -hmm and more berries, that would be enough to send me over the moon. More berries, less biscuit. Over Spaceship Earth. Delicious though. Mm. More desserts like this, Disney. More simply delicious desserts. Made it to Citrus Blossom. Now this is really fun because it's inside the Odyssey Pavilion this year. This is where the Figment booth was during Festival of the Arts. And Citrus Blossom is a booth that's been around for a long time and it is sponsored by the Orange Bird, the cutest little orange you ever did see. The Orange Bird Sipper is here this year again. You can actually be able to order it, which is great. You can also get the little golden book about Orange Bird, which is adorable. And then all of the food and beverage is citrus themed, as you can imagine. So we picked up a couple of goodies right here, including one of my most excited items is that what I said? one of the items i'm most excited about when i saw the menus this is a new item this year it's a citrus baked brie it's got preserved lemon marmalade limoncello marinated i'm sorry macerated blueberries and spiced marcona olives it's got a puff pastry and brie cheese in there and then we also picked up another interesting looking beer flight this one has got a ufo beer company citrus hazy wheat beer an 81 bay brewing company citrus honey cream ale and a parish brewing company orange octane imperial sour so again, three very different kinds of beer, but excited to try those as well. I'm gonna cut into this baby. I love a baked brie. It's one of the only things I can cook. Is it cooking? Technically, yes. Technically, it's cooking, so I can do this. I like to do mine with a little pepper jelly as a little fun treat, but that's not what this is about. This is citrus. I'm gonna make sure I get a bloob, get an almond. It's a little weird not to have like a cracker or a bread or something. <laughs> I'm so happy. Best of the best. That is fantastic. It's not a perfect dish, but it is still on Molly's Best of Fest because it has the potential to be a perfect dish and it's delicious nonetheless. The thing that would make it better is more of the almonds. The almonds are needed because they are a little bit of crunch and they are spiced. They actually have a little bit of heat, which is a perfect breakup of the really rich and creamy brie. And then you've got the sweetness from the berries and the lemon marmalade. So it's sweet, it's citrusy, it's creamy. It's got a little bit of crunch and spice from the almond. All I need are a few more almonds and this would be perfect, but still, this is delightful. I will be eating many more of these during this festival. I might just need to smuggle my own bread though. Cheers. Tink. Ooh. I didn't think I would like this, and I'm really enjoying it. This is the honey cream ale. Normally, I'm not a cream ale guy because I think it's strange to have the texture of the beer almost like take over your mouth and like coat your tongue. This one doesn't do that, and I think it's because of the citrus. I really like this. This is the hazy wheat beer. I actually prefer this more than the wheat beer, the Hefe, that we had at Pineapple Promenade. It's just a little lighter. It's still zippy because of the citrus. Very refreshing. Could definitely drink one of these on a hot day. It's definitely heavier than a classic lager, but it's not so, so heavy that it'll weigh you down. This is a great beer. You have to try that. This is the uh, Imperial Sour. It tastes like alcoholic orange juice. <laughs> it is so good. You know what I'm thinking immediately? Beer mosas. The, yeah, 100%. This could be a beer mosa, a little whisper, a unicorn's eyelash, a sprinkle of fairy dust. Of that? Of champagne. Yeah, into champagne. That into the champagne, yeah. Now I'm going to be trying to figure out if I can acquire a beer from Broussard, Louisiana, here in Orlando on a regular basis. That is a great beer. Parish Brewing Company. Listen, I don't oft pander, but please, please. We're sure you're watching. Um, 
Once again, though, this beer flight, very, like, I love this festival so much. I'm obsessed with this festival. It's my favorite festival, and these beer flights have cemented why. They're fruity, they're light, they're refreshing, they're delicious, they're unique, and each flight has been three very distinct, different beers, and I'm loving this. And it should be said, just to sort of piggyback on that, it's nice to have a beer that's this light and refreshing in a festival as Florida is moving into yeah. probably its hottest seasons. Mm -hmm. It's not going to weigh you down. You're not going to drink a stout and walk around going, oh, great, another meal. This yeah. is just light enough to keep you going. Yeah. Good beers this festival. Oh, so good. Good beers. Unsurprisingly, they have a ton of merchandise in here in Citrus Blossom. They've got the Orange Bird collection, which is one of the collections of merchandise this year. So let's do the Orange Bird merch rundown. Orange Bird tank top. Orange Bird t-shirt. Orange Bird stump planter, I think. Orange Bird corksicle. Orange Bird coffee mug. Orange Bird trash can salt and pepper shaker. Orange Bird ears. And you know, I gotta say, I didn't love these online, but in person, they are much cuter. They have like a 70s vintage thing going on. I may be rethinking if I purchase these or not. Orange bird shorts, orange bird hat. Now this is very cute headgear. Do I need the hat? Orange bird spirit jersey, orange bird magic band, orange bird pin, different orange bird pin. This one says pass holder on it. Yet another different orange bird pin. And it does appear they've got the rest of the Flower and Garden merchandise in here as well. And it is far less crowded in here than it is in the creation shop. So you may want to come in here. I just spoke to a cast member, a manager of merchandise. And he said the only thing that they have up front that they do not have here are the lounge fly backpacks. So unless you need the lounge flies that look like this and this, you can come here and I bet you'll have a lower line. But for now, let's look at that Figment collection. Figment t-shirt, Figment turbis, Figment magnet, Figment pin, different Figment pin. Figment magic band plus Figment bucket hat that you could wear in three different ways. This way, this way, or this way. Figment mug, Crocs, Figment terrarium, Figment salt and pepper shaker trash can, Figment trinket glass, different Figment shirt. And the final collection, Snow White. You've got A, Snow White Tervis, Snow White coasters, Snow White apron, Snow White wishing well planter, I think? Snow White gardening gloves, Snow White t-shirt, Snow White pin, and last, but certainly maybe, well, possibly, depending on how you feel about Flake Flowers least, the Snow White Ears. To celebrate our success of completing the Garden Grays, we have gathered the glorious reward of Mango Lime Dole Whip, which is only available by completing the Garden Grays. So I'm not saying I feel special, but I'm saying I feel super special. And as an added bonus, you also get a pack of wildflower seeds, which I don't have a garden, but I'll buy, I'll put these in a pot. It also comes in this cute little cup that you could take home. Ooh, that is so good. Lime is one of my favorite flavors of Dole Whip. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm not really tasting mango. It tastes a lot like the lime, but it's cool that there's an exclusive flavor to the Garden Grays. I've never seen mango lime anywhere else, so. Very fun. Obviously, this is also vegan. Dole Whip, the, uh, most of the fruit flavors are vegan. And again, like Alan said, you can't buy this. So I love doing the crawls at the different festivals. I love trying the new things that I maybe wouldn't otherwise. And this was a good one. What was your favorite dish on the Garden Grays? The coconut tres leche cake. Mmm, that was really good. I know I boldly said avocado toast right at the beginning, but it got trumped by the corn. That was bold Immediately, of you. that was too bold, you know? But hey, it was a good garden graze, a good crawl, and now we have Dole Whip, so we're winners. Let me tell you, nothing hits quite like a Dole Whip after a long day in a hot theme park. It is so refreshing, so good, it's tart, ugh. And to celebrate our success, not just of the garden graze, but coming in under budget, just a smidge, we bought our favorite beers from the Pineapple Booth, the Hazy IPA. Because nothing says successful at staying on budget like spending more money. Adds up. Yeah. That adds up to me. Yep. Yeah. Update, friends. We came into Creations just to see if they had any other merch. We found a few things we didn't see inside Citrus Blossom, such as this pass holder corksicle, this pass holder shirt, this pin set, and these garden stakes. Those are really cute. If I had a garden, I'd consider them. So if there's merchandise you're looking for, you can likely get it over at Citrus Blossom, but they do have a few things here if they don't have it when you get to Citrus. 
also in Creations spotted the Flower and Garden Dooney and Burke. It is Snow White inspired. There is a large tote, a crossbody, and a smaller bag. Headed back to the front of the park because there's one more thing we have to do to end our time at the Flower and Garden Festival, and that is see the show on Spaceship Earth. So Spaceship Earth, the beacon of magic here, has been lit up for the 50th anniversary, but for all the different festivals, they've been dropping in little light shows themed to that event. So for the Flower and Garden Festival this year, this year they are doing Encanto, What Else Can I Do?, which is the song with Isabella and Mirabelle, where all the flowers are growing and it's beautiful, and this is always a perfect way to end your night at Epcot, so very excited to see the show. Well, we have eaten our way around the Flower and Garden Festival, and it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for. Molly and Alan's Best of the Fest. TM pending. My Best of the Fest are the cinnamon roll bites from Brunch Cot, the honey butter chicken and waffles, as well as the flatbread from the Honey Bee Stro, the Citrus Blossom Beer Flight from the Citrus Blossom, and the Bananas Foster Bread Pudding from Magnolia Terrace. And my best of the fest, trying not to repeat anything because I'd also say that chicken and waffles is on my list, but my best of the fest, it's no surprise that that baked brie from Citrus Blossom makes the list, the bison from Farmer's Feast, the violet lemonade, both the beer and the non-alcoholic slush from Pineapple Promenade, of course my classic of the Crab Rangoon with my secret hack of getting the peanut sauce from the Lotus House, the goat cheese croissant from Florida Lee in France, and my best of the fest dessert, if it's not gonna be the cinnamon roll bites, it's gotta be that strawberry shortcake from Florida Fresh. Bonus shout out to the Frushi, a timeless classic here at the Flower and Garden Festival. I feel like that's the best for everyone. Kids, adults, everybody will probably enjoy the Frushi, so honorable mention to that. It's the most magical fruit on earth. Faith, trust, and Frushi. To Frushi and beyond. Mm -hmm. There's a Frushi in my mouth. I think I'll quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> and now it's also time for the first ever Topiary Awards. Ah, yes, the Topiary Awards. What are the best of the fest when it comes to the beautiful topiaries? Which almost feels unfair because they're all amazing. I got mine. Okay, I don't know if I can narrow it down. I'm working on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Work away. Uh, the Tiana Topiary in the America Pavilion is beautiful. She's absolutely stunning. And while I love Snow White, what I was really there for was for the seven dwarves and their it's topiaries. Great, yeah. Gosh, they just embody the personality aspects of those dwarves. I mean, bashful, sneezy, happy, Doc. You know, his personality of Doc. Yeah. So good. Those are good ones. I'm glad you said those, so that helps me narrow mine down. Obviously, my favorite is Buzz Lightyear because he's my favorite character, but I got to give it to the Encanto topiaries. Those are amazing. I love all the different flowers they use, the succulents and the Mirabelle's dress, and like those, that one was mind-blowingly beautiful. And, you know, I got to say the Lion King. I Ooh. love the Lion King ones. There's two sets. There's, you know, Mufasa and, and Zarabi and Rafiki and Simba. But then there's also Timon and Pumbaa. But I'm also having a hard time not saying the Lady and the Tramp one because as the festival goes on, her ears get bigger and fluffier and it's gorgeous. And there's all the flowers around it in Italy. So all the topiaries is my choice. Um, but those are a few highlights for me. And as much as we don't want to do this, we must. Yeah. We are compelled. Yeah. Uh, it's the worst of the fest. We owe it to you. Things that we would not get again. I'll kick it off? Yeah. Okay. My worst of the fest is a surprise and frankly a little heartbreaking. It was the tenderloin beef tips from Canada. Mm. While the rest of the dish was incredible, the beef tips were supposed to be the star of the show and they were overcooked, a little chewy, and I don't know if it was just a bad plate or maybe a bad day because it was, again, the first day of the festival, so that's always a little bit tough to get things up and running. But when I compare it to everything else we had, I wouldn't get it again. Yeah, my medium rare heart cried a little bit eating that. Uh, I gotta say, from refreshment port, the shrimp scampi poutine, <laughs> it was just yeah. too much going on, both flavor-wise and texture-wise. The fries were too mushy, the curds were cold, and then the addition of seafood, it just, it was a gamble, and we appreciate gambles and taking chances, but this was just not it for me, so I wouldn't get that again. And that's a wrap on our Flower and Garden Festival here at Epcot.
And this was a very special video. Not only is Flower Garden my personal favorite festival, but this marks the official completion of the gauntlet of Epcot festivals. Our very first real video we did when we launched Mammoth Club was Food and Wine last year. And since then we have covered Festival of the Holidays, Festival of the Arts, and now Flower and Garden, again, as Mammoth Club. And thank you everybody who's been watching us, who's helped our channel grow, who's liked and subscribed and told your friends about us. It's, I, I can't believe it. It's, we couldn't do this without you guys. I'm getting emotional and dramatic. So uh, before I start crying hysterically, just thank you. Thank you so much, folks. Be sure to like and subscribe if you're new and follow us on all of our socials. And just know we appreciate you more than we can say. Let us know if you're coming to Flower and Garden. What are you excited to eat? This festival's not over for several months, so you know we'll be back trying more things. And in the meantime, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it's been so magical. Good night. See y'all soon.